Hello there and welcome to my second vlog on skills versus capacities in speed and agility. Skills are concerned with outcomes via how we apply movement solutions whereby a skill issue can be due to a lack of familiarity with the task or suboptimal movement strategy. Capacity on the other hand moderates the system's response through the ability of the body to deliver movement outcomes with a capacity issue possibly stemming from limitations in force, strength or mobility causing suboptimal movement patterns. As I work with rugby, the athletes used are four amateur rugby players. Firstly, we will look at agility, with agility being defined as a rapid whole body movement with change of velocity or direction in response to a stimulus. The agility drill being used is a Y cut, whereby the player accelerates 5 meters, steps off either their left or right foot and then accelerates a further 5 meters in that direction. I believe this player has a skill issue when performing this agility task. As we can see he plants off his left foot but he doesn't laterally displace himself anywhere and instead he uses his right foot to generate force into the ground to move in a desired direction. This is similar off the other foot although with less intent we can see that he plants with his right foot but he doesn't go anywhere and instead he uses his opposite foot to generate force to exit the drill. I know this is a skill issue for this athlete because he has capacity during the game to plant his foot outside his centre of mass and apply enough force into the ground in a limited time frame to evade a defender. So using a constraints based approach by including a walking start and a longer acceleration period meant that the player entered the drill at a higher velocity. Using these constraints we can see that the player is able to plant his foot into the ground and generate enough force to laterally displace himself greater than previously. Then he opens up his other hip to hammer down and explode out of the drill. His movement pattern stepping off his other leg is similar with a constraint whereby although he included a full step and his velocity is increased he is still able to apply enough force to laterally displace himself and exit the drill. As we can see in the before and after photos of this athlete stepping, using a constraints based approach he is in a better athletic position to generate force into the ground in order to evade defenders. I believe the next athlete has a capacity issue in his left ankle when performing agility drills. Initially when watching this clip I believe the player had a capacity issue in his right ankle which caused him to slip and the defender to beat him on the inside shoulder. However, when watching the video back, I actually think the athlete has a capacity issue for his left ankle. This capacity issue means that the force he applies to the ground with that left ankle isn't enough to change its direction and that his right ankle slipping was just a consequence of his left ankle not being able to apply enough force into the ground. After watching this video, I spoke to the club physiotherapist and she confirmed that this player sustained a left ankle injury about 8 months prior to this match, confirming that most likely this is a capacity issue. During the agility drill, when stepping off his left ankle, the athlete's strategy is to plant and then open up his right hip to help him get out. He does laterally displace himself with the left foot, but it's that right hip opening and exploding off is more obvious than the step off his opposite side. Watching the athlete step off his right foot, as mentioned previously, he doesn't employ the same strategy of opening his hip up to explode away as much as he does for his weaker left foot. One thing I did notice was that it seemed to be that he was faster stepping off his right foot and going through it frame by frame the ground contact time for his right foot was 0.203 but for his left foot was 0.688. So this athlete is taking a longer ground contact time to produce force off his previously injured ankle and although it may result in the same impulse produced it's taking him longer to generate it off his left foot. To improve this athlete's rate of force development, exercises such as concentric jump squats will be used and using a combination of bilateral and unilateral multidirectional plyometrics to improve the athlete's reactive strength. Improvements in peak force can be targeted through single leg isometric push exercises, but it's understood that in rugby there usually isn't time available to produce peak force. The speed task in this vlog is acceleration from a walking start. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity of an object with respect to time. 
In rugby, accelerations are often preceded by different movement patterns, with the research from Duthi et al. reporting around a quarter of sprints were preceded by walking. I believe this athlete has a skill issue when performing the walk into acceleration. The athlete circled is the athlete in question here, and you can see that when he begins his acceleration, he is trying to replicate the forward lean of an acceleration, but because he is starting from an upright position, this results in a curved spine and his head looking down. As he is trying to replicate the forward lean by keeping his head down, we can see that his thigh does not get parallel to the ground to hammer down, his head isn't in line with his pelvis and torso, and due to his curved back he isn't fully extending in the ankle, knee and hip. This is the same across his first six steps of acceleration, whereby his back is significantly curved and his gaze is facing towards the ground before he begins to rise. Research from this article and further work from Nick Winkleman has detailed the importance external cues have on enhancing the bimotor abilities of speed. External cues have been shown to enhance sprint performance compared to internal cues. I had this athlete to replicate the drill but cued them to chase a kick. Watching the video back I could still see his gaze was facing down so maybe he interpreted that as chasing a grubber kick along the ground and as we know there will be situations where the player will have to accelerate whilst looking ahead of him at opposing players my next cue was to pretend he is chasing down another player. In this video we can see that his thigh is closer to parallel to hammer down his ankle is dorsiflex, creating pretension in the Achilles, and his back is straight. As the athlete is able to create better acceleration shapes from a walking start following external cueing, this would agree that this was a skill issue with this athlete. I hypothesize that the athlete circled has a capacity issue when accelerating from a walking start, specifically an elasticity deficit whereby he is more muscularly adapted to produce force. What we can see from this video is that when the athlete begins to accelerate, he overreaches and has a longer ground contact time through a heel strike and roll. As I believe he is in the elasticity deficit, the heel strike allows the athlete to spend more time to apply force to the ground, whereas quicker athletes spend less time on the ground applying the correct amount of force in the right direction. His thigh doesn't reach parallel with the ground to allow him to openly hammer down, and he doesn't recover his foot quick enough, resulting in spending time on the backside. From testing, this athlete is the slowest player in the rugby team and one of the heaviest. And due to mass specific force requirements, this is probably another reason why he is relying on maximum strength qualities over elastic tendon qualities. Due to a lack of resources, I used a basic load velocity profile of loaded accelerations to test this hypothesis. From the graph, we can see that a lesser drop off between the loaded axles compared to the unloaded to loaded, hinting that this athlete is probably more muscularly adapted, but further tests should be used to confirm this. As horizontal propulsive ground reaction force and impulse relative to one's body mass is important, if this athlete drops dead weight this would most likely aid in his acceleration capabilities. But this mightn't be optimal for his positional requirements in the front row. Also there must be an appreciation that he mightn't reach max velocity regularly during matches, but improved acceleration capacities is important as he'll mainly carry the ball into contact. In order to improve this athlete's elastic force producing capabilities, to target reactive strength, unilateral plyometrics could be used, and as mentioned previously, concentric jump squats could be used to improve rate of force development. 